Assalamu alaikum everyone. One of our viewers asked the following question. I'm afraid that my addiction to the party lifestyle, alcohol, sex, and recreational drugs has gone too far for too long, and I have no way of stopping. As a born Muslim, I am considered lost from the path, and if I were to ask for help, I will only be judged and boycotted. Is there any hope left, and Allah will forgive me if I want to try to become a practicing Muslim again? This question is a pretty important one, and it gives me an opportunity to talk to you about addiction. But before I do, I want to talk to you about Allah's forgiveness. First of all, understand that nobody who's still breathing is beyond hope. The fact that Allah is keeping you alive means you have an opportunity to start all over again. Just because people think you are too far gone, or people think you've done too many sins, or you're too terrible, there's no hope for you, that's people. People are not the same as Allah. Allah says, even if you have a mountain of sins, فَأُولَٰئِكَ يُبَدِّلُ اللَّهُ سَيِّئَاتِهِمْ حَسَنَاتِ Allah will take mountains of sins and convert them into good deeds if you just repent, if you just make tawbah. So the first thing I want you to know is that when you make tawbah, when you truly, truly repent to, repent to Allah, and what that means is I feel bad for what I did. And I'm promising Allah I'm going to do my best to never do that again. That's it. That's what repentance is. If you can do that and feel that in your heart, then that means that Allah has taken your sins. Not only did He get rid of your sins, He converted the weight of your sins into the weight of good deeds. hasanat. That's the beautiful gift from Allah of tawbah. Now, the next thing is the name of Allah, at tawab Allah calls Himself someone who accepts tawbah over and over and over and over again. So it's not like you made tawbah once, later on, a year later, six months later, three weeks later, you made the same mistake again. And you're like, ah, oh, I keep falling into the same mistake, I'm addicted. Now Allah will not accept my tawbah because I made it last time. And Allah's going to be like, well, you already used it up last three weeks ago, so no, no hope for you, sorry, you're going to hell. It doesn't work like that. Allah's name is at tawab And the Prophet told us, children of Adam, وسلم, the Prophet told us, that the children of Adam are khatta'un, meaning, Creatures that make mistakes over and over and over again. And that's part of life. We keep slipping, getting up, fixing ourselves, and then sometimes it happens that you slip again. Just don't have in your head that even though I made tawbah, I, I asked Allah to forgive me, I'm pretty sure I'm going to be doing this next week, on Friday, at 8.30. No. If you have a calendar in your head already, when you're going to be sitting, that's not real repentance. But if you genuinely meant to ask Allah's forgiveness, and you really are trying to get away from your sin, and then you happen to spl split, you know, slip again, because you're human, that's the kind of tawbah Allah will keep on accepting over and over and over again. But there's other, another few things that are in this question that's, that are important for us to talk about. Look, look at this question again. The party lifestyle, alcohol, sex, recreational drugs, you told me so much about your sins and very specific sins. You confess to me. Or sometimes you go confess to an imam or you go confess to a friend. Our religion is not about confessions. That's other religions. Our religion, you don't go to someone and confess your sins to them. The only one you should tell your sins to are Allah. That's the only one you should tell your sins to. I, like Allah, I have done this and I have done this and I have done this and I'm so sorry that I did this and I've done this so many times. Nobody else should know about that. Nobody else should know, especially not somebody who you think is more religious and you go and tell them because they will help you find forgiveness. Even if you wanted to ask that, the smart way to ask that is, what if someone made these mistakes? Or what if someone made very big mistakes? You don't have to name yourself. You don't have to go to somebody and say, Ustad, I'm a terrible person. I've done some horrible, horrible sins and I'm addicted to them and I cannot stop. What should I do? Don't embarrass yourself before anyone, even if you're, they're trying to help you. Don't humiliate yourself in front of someone. This need to confess is a problem. You have to understand that the only one you should confess yourself to is Allah. And Allah and Allah alone. Everybody else, you can say, I need help. How can you help me? Or if somebody needed this, had this problem, what could they do? So that's the first thing I want uh, to, for you to understand. The second thing is, this is not just a spiritual problem. Don't think that, okay, I'm addicted and I keep sinning and shaitan keeps getting me and I keep getting waswasa or the whisper of the devil and that's why I keep falling into sin. That may be a part of the problem and that's why you ask Allah's protection and Allah's refuge from the devil. That's part of it. But there's another part. Addiction is a very real psychological, emotional thing. It can become a chemical thing. People can develop chemical dependencies on alcohol. They can develop some sort of psychological dependencies on some of these behaviors. 
and there are things that happen in your life that trigger that behavior. You're going through some kind of anxiety, or somebody's giving you a hard time, or you're really stressed, and something in you says, I need to go to the club. I need to have a drink. I need to do this. I need to do that. And you just escape with one of these behaviors. That means this is not just a spiritual problem, this is an emotional problem. This is a psychological problem also. And it's okay for you to seek help from a professional. Because addiction is a real thing, it's like a disease. And you have to treat it like a disease. You can't go to somebody, if somebody came to me, imagine this, because it's a disease, somebody came to me with diabetes. Or somebody came to me with a heart problem. And said, Ustad, I have a heart problem. What dua can I make? And I say, well, if I, if I, even if I told them a dua, that doesn't mean you don't go to the cardiologist. <laughs> you should address the spiritual, but at the same time, you need to address that this is a medical problem. The same way this can become a psychological problem. And for that, there are people who are experts in helping people get away from addiction and overcome their addictions, and you should seek that kind of help. The last thing is, just to think about this, and it's very important, Allah made our dignity, our sense of self-respect, a very important part of our lives. I, you know, in the beginning I told you, don't confess your sins to anybody. Don't tell anybody else what mistakes you've made. But I'll, let's take that a step further. If you came and told me, you did this sin, this sin, and this sin, and even though I'm not mentioning your name, when you hear me, when you, if you watch this video, and you're like, oh, he's talking about me. And then your mom is sitting next to you. And your friends are sitting next to you. Or your cousins are sitting next to you. And you start feeling in your heart, man, they all know about what I did because Ustav Noman just made a video about my conversation with him. <laughs> you know? In other words, you're, you're turning your sins into a conversation piece. You're coming to me and telling me your story, and now I'm going to talk about your story to somebody else, even if I don't name you. You're turning yourself into a story. You're turning yourself into a conversation. You deserve privacy. You deserve that nobody should be talking about your personal life. As a matter of fact, for Muslims, Allah wants us to not be interested in other people's personal life. And we do not disclose our personal matters without a good reason. لا تتتبعوا عورات المسلمين Don't, and the Prophet said, وسلم, don't become obsessed with personal issues of other people. And this becomes a culture. You know, people really want to know. Oh yeah, and then what happened? And then what happened? Wow, that was messed up. Have you heard this story? This guy did so much sin, he was so messed up. Nobody needs to know that. And you don't need to embarrass yourself and humiliate yourself. The fact that Allah covered your sins, the fact that Allah did not let people know what mistakes you made, the fact that your mistakes are not recorded and they're not on the internet, the fact that there's no YouTube videos about your mistakes is a gift from Allah. Why are you rejecting that gift? Why are you throwing that gift away and saying, you know what, no, no, Allah covered my sin, but I don't want to. I want to broadcast my sin. Even if you tell somebody you've done these sins, that's not an accomplishment. That doesn't make you a better person. And that doesn't get rid of the sin. In some people's head, they say, man, I had done some, lots of messed up things. Oh man, I'm really messed up. Do you want me to give you a cookie? Is that a badge you should get, that you did a lot of messed up things? In some people's head, the fact that they confess that means, you know, they're, they're not scared of it, or they're, they're over it, or they're not embarrassed about it. Confessing your skin, sins is not an accomplishment. It's not something you should be proud of. It's not something that makes you feel better. It, it doesn't. The only time you should confess those kinds of things are in a counseling type setting, where you're, somebody's actually trying to help you with a specific kind of addiction, a specific kind of problem, and as you're, they're helping you deal with that problem, they might need to know certain specifics if they're a professional. But don't come to the guy with the big beard and tell him all this other stuff because somehow he has a connection to Allah that you don't have and they're going to tell you about your sins and what you've done. That doesn't, that's not this religion. In this religion, every single person has a direct line to Allah. One last quick thing and I'll be done. And that's, you're afraid to ask for help because you'll be judged. Exactly. The way you're asking for help, you will be judged. That's not the way to ask for help. And that is a very real fear. Which is why you shouldn't just open up to anybody. Some people love talking about their problem to everybody. You have a conversation with me, then you have a conversation with your friend, then you have a conversation with your uncle, then with your class fellow, then with your professor, and everybody knows your personal business. Why are you doing that? And then they start saying, man, this guy's always talking about what he, what he did, what he messed up. And then you feel like you're being judged. But you put yourself in that position. Don't put yourself in that position and protect yourself. 
Again, the door of Tawbah is always going to be open. Allah is always going to protect us against our own sins so long as we genuinely, sincerely ask for His repentance. And I really honestly pray that all of us seek repentance from Allah every single day for the big things we've done and for the little things we've done. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.